Hi everyone, I am Chris and this is Simply Classic. I'm so excited that you're able to join me tonight for the live. And whether you're watching live tonight or on the replay, I really do appreciate you tuning in. So today we're going to be doing the Alley B hack. And this is something that was posted on the Facebook group and super excited about it. So I've got a couple of things that um, I want to show you on how to do the hack. We're going to kind of do it together this first time. But before we get started, I want to tell you about a couple of things going on. Um, I just like to say hello to Cheryl, Julie, Lisa. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me. So two things I want to tell you about. One is that we just got a full shipment of foes in on Monday. So we are in the process of taking photos and getting them posted on the website. So you can be able to pre-order again like you did last time while we're cutting. And I will do a video for you probably tomorrow to show you those foes and you can get on there and start ordering and we'll have them out to you. Um, last time we had them out, we said two to three weeks and I think we had everything out within two and a half weeks. So we'll be probably shipping them the week of probably May 30th, that, that week somewhere in there. But if we can get them out earlier, we will. A lot of fun, fun summer colors and you're actually going to see a sneak peek tonight. Um, the blue wavy leopard is back in stock. So the other colors we've ordered, but they're not here yet, but the blue is. So I know, I know a lot of you are waiting on that blue. So you might want to go ahead and order, um, while you can now, if you order more than one, I'll try to combine your orders and refund any shipping, you know, any additional shipping. So don't be afraid to order. And then if you need to go back and reorder again, just shoot me an email or a lot of times I look at them and see, and as long as I still have it here, I'll combine them for you. Okay. So, um, hi to Sandy and Lynn. Hello, everyone. Terry, Jenny, New Hampshire. Hey, you're my old stomping ground. I was born and raised in New Hampshire. Fun times. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing I want to tell you about is we are working hard behind the scenes. We have our shop probably, I'd say maybe three weeks out from moving in. So we're excited about that. And I'm going to show you just a little sneak peek of this. I'm going to just put this up on the screen here for you. And I know it's kind of small, but you can kind of see how we're coming along with it. We've got the sheetrock up and walls are going up and big construction mess, but we're getting there. So good stuff that's moving along. So as soon as we can get down there, we'll have our new filming studio down there. We're going to have lots of light and um, eventually, hopefully in the fall, fingers crossed, we'll maybe have our first class. Okay. So let's see. Um, Actually, Rayanne, I'm glad you're on tonight because this hack, I think, is the one that you posted on the Facebook group, the Simply Classic Facebook group. So let's take a look at it. I'm going to put a few photos up on the screen. And this one here is the top of the bag. So you can see here that instead of grommets, they have this little snap tag on each side. So I have an alley B here um, that I wanted to pull out and show you. I was, wasn't was 100% sure if we needed those, but I think we do. And we're going to find out for sure tonight. But basically, instead of the grommets, they put the two snap tabs like centered here on each side. Okay. On this. So we're going to do that. And then the other thing I wanted to show you is on this photo here, you can see that the top, instead of having a grommet here, they actually have a closure and it's got a twist um, lock on it. So we're going to do that tonight too. Because of that, this next photo, you're going to see, and this is kind of hard to see. I had to blow it up, but there's two separate pieces. You have this strap piece here, which is this strap piece, 
but they've cut it off and they actually have sewn it on the back. Okay, so instead of grommets here on the back, what I can tell, you've got one piece coming this way for your strap, this strap here, and you have another piece coming this way for your actual closure. Okay, so we're going to do all that tonight. The If you go online, and I have not had a chance to link this yet, so I will link it after I get through with the live tonight. There are two pattern pieces you need, and those pattern pieces are on the website. So if you go to the website and you go to patterns and downloads, in probably about the middle of the page when you start seeing all the Alley B variations, you're going to see the Alley, P, Alley B no grommet hat. And there's two pieces you're going to get with that. And that's a piece that looks like this and a piece that looks like this. And there's no charge for these pieces. If you have the pattern, you can just download this. So this piece is the snap tab that's going to hold the bag closed at the top. What I did was I cut two pieces larger, or actually four pieces all together, but a little bit larger than this piece here. I glued them wrong sides together. And then I actually put this piece right over my two pieces that are glued together and cut it out. So now I have something that looks like this with raw edges, all nice and cut even. I added my snap, okay, so this will snap together, and then I went back and I put some base coat and some color on this. So these are going to be our two snap pieces. And everybody needs to thank Rayanne. She's the one that put this on the Simply Classic Inspiration Group, and she's on tonight. So thank you, Rayanne. I appreciate it because this is an awesome hack. I think it's going to come out really good. And I haven't made a full one yet, so we're doing this together. Okay, so the other piece you need is this. And when you, let me find my piece, here it is. I did the same thing. I cut out two pieces that were larger than this piece, glued them wrong sides together. Then I put the piece on top, I cut around, and then I used, I sewed it and then did some base coat and edge coat. And then of course I put the base of my snap or my turn lock in there. And there's a spot for that. Now these here, and this is what I'm thinking on this, is instead of sewing this piece on in our shoulder strap, I think we might be better off to rivet them on because you're going to have to put these on after the bags together. And you can sew probably two lines going this way, but to turn the bag and sew a vertical line this way, like if we were going to sew a box on here, it would be very, very difficult. So you see I'm sewing, sitting at my cylinder arm machine tonight. And the reason why, here, let me get rid of this picture for you. Yep, thank you, Julie. So the reason why is because I have a bag done pretty much. And all we have to do is top stitch and then we have to saw the stuff on. So I feel like it's going to be a little easier on my cylinder arm machine. Doesn't mean you can't do it on a regular um, flatbed. You certainly can. And if you've made the alley B, you certainly know what you can and can't do with this pattern. Okay. The other thing I want to tell you is on your shoulder strap. You're going to cut and sew the shoulder strap just like you do with a regular alley B. But right where it starts to curve, you're going to cut it off. And I drew a line on there so you can see about where you have to cut that off. Okay. If you're not sure, Take this pattern piece and stick it right on top. And where the pattern pieces meet in width 
is where you're going to cut it off. Now you see, I did not cut my pattern piece here, but what I did was traced it out, glued two pieces, you cut it four by whatever the pattern says, I don't even remember, glue them wrong sides together. You're going to put your shoulder strap on, trace around, but when I traced around, I pulled this off and I drew a straight line across instead of doing this curve here, okay? And then sewed, edge coated, trimmed, you know, all that kind of good stuff like you normally do, okay? So basically where we're at, let me put these pieces aside, is I have a alley B here that I've worked on and my right now I have my exterior, have my lining. This is where the, the process where I'm at. Sticking this in. And here we're going to add, start adding the snap tabs and adding everything on. Okay. So as Julie's asking me if I have a favorite glue that I like to use. One of the things in working with leather that the more you work with leather, the more you're going to want to experiment with is some leather cement. And I like to use barge cement. And so I kind of cheat a little bit and use that on my foes as well. And the reason why is because once you cement two pieces together, whether it's leather or faux leather, doesn't matter. Once you cement them together, they act as one piece. So you don't have spots of glue that have adhered and spots where there's no glue that haven't adhered. Also, another thing is that when you use that barge cement, you want to go, you want to cut your piece larger and you want to go beyond where the edges are going to be. And then that way, when you cut out, these edges are nice and glued together. So as you're edge coating, you're not having to worry about these edges separating. Okay. That makes sense. Does anybody have any questions on that? Uh, Elaine, can this be used with the Alley B at 80%? Yes, I think it can be used. Um, you might want to take this piece. I'm thinking, of, I'm thinking as I'm going here, you may have to reduce this piece just a little bit. So what I would do to start out with Elaine is to take this, you know, maybe cut it full size before you put your actual um, hole in here, place it on the 80% one and just make sure the size of it looks okay. On the 80% Alley B, we do reduce the size of our shoulder strap. So my guess is yes, you can use it. You're just gonna have to reduce the size. And let's talk about printers for just a second because I have two printers here at home. When I print pattern pieces out on one of them, they print too small. When I print those pattern pieces out on another one, they print perfect. And I'm printing them both at 100%. So the problem with PDF patterns is that printers print differently. Every printer prints differently. So sometimes, depending on your printer, you may have to print the pattern pieces at 103 or 104%. So I suggest finding a page with one of those two inch measure boxes, printing just that page and measuring it and see how it works out. Some printers automatically put margins in and you can't undo it. And it's kind of a pain, but just know that um, you may have to play with it a little bit. I have a few people that have emailed me here recently and have been having problems printing the, the pieces just aren't coming out right. So keep in mind that for all of our major patterns, not hacks, but all patterns themselves. So the Julie, the Alley B, the Fairhaven, the Compton, um, the Leah, we actually have print versions of those patterns. And with those print versions, you get large scale paper with large scale pieces. You don't have to cut anything out or you have to cut. You don't have to glue any pages together. You don't have to tape any pages together. They're full, full size, correct size and everything. So if you're having problems with your printer, or if you're not sure about it, 
it's probably going to be worth your while to go ahead and order one of those print patterned um, binders. It's, it's a booklet and then the pattern pieces. Okay. So are we good on everything? Everybody knows what you need to do. You need to go ahead and download these. Again, you're going to get two little pattern pieces like this. And then we'll go from there. Okay. So this is one of the new faux. It is really pretty. It's got like a um, brown on the part of it. And it's got white on the other half. And wouldn't that be, and I, the white, the light, I have like bright light shining on me, y'all. It's um, kind of, I feel like I need to wear my sunglasses, but it's kind of really making this white reflect, but it's really a beautiful, beautiful pattern. So I have actually put this one up. I got a chance to put this one up on the website. So um, if you want to order it, go ahead and order. And then if you want to add anything later, you can certainly do that. Okay. It is a gorgeous bow. I mean, it is a awesome summer bag. Summer and spring, we have a lot of really cool colors. All right, so I'm going to move the camera, and we're going to start putting this thing together and see how it goes. Like I said, I'm learning with y'all. going to see how it all goes together. I think we'll do good. So bear with me a second as I move this camera. Let's see if we can get you so you can see everything. Looks pretty good. You need me to change that angle. Let me know that I think that will do it. Lisa, yes, your name finally updated. I know you're, you're I always see you as Laney, and I know your, your company is just plain Lane. Lisa is a tester, so um, I'm never quite sure what to call you. <laughs> okay, so we need to, one of the first things we need to do is to put our lock on. Let me zoom in a little bit. Oh, well, too much. Okay, we need to put the other side of our lock on. So I'm going to pull my line out. And I have already determined that on the main part of the bag, we need to come down an inch and make marks and then go ahead and put this on. Okay, you don't want to come down further than that because you got to remember that you have extra beyond the other side of this lock. So what I mean by that is once we put this on, you have this much extra coming down on the bag. Okay, make sense? Hey, Gloria. Yes, it would look great on the Julie. So we're going to, I've already kind of marked this. I'm going to try to mark it with ballpoint pen so you can see what I am doing here. I'm basically going down one inch and I'm going to add this. Now there are so many different kinds of locks and um, twist locks and slide locks. I mean there's so many different things. I'm sure you're all going to come up with some really cool ideas about how to close this bag. Okay, so I've got my two little marks there. And y'all have to forgive me. I forgot my cutter. Let me get my cutter. We're going to put this on. So I decided on this one thing I did a little bit different when I cut out the pieces. All the other pieces are exactly the same on the Sally B, except for the shoulder strap, which I already mentioned. But I did, I used Decoville Heavy on the front, the bottom band, and these back pieces. No stabilizer on the sides. So that's not different. That's exactly the same as the regular pattern. But on the upper lining, I did not use any stabilizer at all. The pattern says to use some Decoville light, but I did not because I feel like this is not going to be held together with those grommets or, you know, with the drawstring. 
going to be just with that snap. And I felt like it needed a little bit more flexibility on the sides. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, so put this in. Go ahead and fold it down. Okay, so we have that. I'm going to put a little bit of tape on it. just so that it doesn't rub on my lining and to kind of hold it in place. And I like using double-sided tape here. The glue on the double-sided tape, I think helps hold the hardware. Okay, so now the other thing we need to do is put our little snap tabs on. And I did a little bit of measuring ahead of time. And what I found is that these need to be about an inch above the side of the bag. So these are longer. Don't, don't put it up like this. You want about an inch showing. So I'm just going to kind of find the center. I don't want to do any kind of notch because you're going to be able to see that. It'll just give me an idea of where I need to put this. And I'm going to clip it. and then we're going to stitch. Now, when we stitch this, we're gonna see those stitches, right? Because, I mean, we're gonna to top stitch around, but as we stitch this, whatever kind of stitch mark we make here, we're going to see. So just kind of be aware of that. I don't think there's anything wrong with that because obviously we have a tab here, but I do think that um, we just need to be aware of that. Now make sure that you put, if you put this side going down, you put this side so your snap is up. Because as we pull this together, one is gonna go on top of the other. So don't put both facing down. So let me find my center here. No, Janice, we are not using grommets. This is a no grommet bag. So actually, if you have wanted to do this bag, but you're a little intimidated by grommets, you don't want to use grommets, this is an awesome hack for you because you, we're not using grommets. Yay. So before I sew these, I'm just going to kind of test this out. Pull this in. And see, there's the start of our shape already. Okay. So I think that is going to be pretty good. So I'm going to stitch basically where I would top stitch here. And honestly, I'm probably going to come down some and stitch down here as well. I really want to make sure this holds in place. And when you think about it, it's going to have a lot of pull on it, right? We're going to be closing, opening, closing, opening, and just one stitch line, I don't think it's going to be enough. So let me make a little bit of room here for myself. You know what, Laura, that's a good idea. Laura says, what about attaching the tab to the lining center first, then top stitch to the exterior? Would that work? You know, I think it would. And then our second stitch, you know, I still want to do two stitches, but then it would be on the lining. That's a good idea. All right. Let's try that instead. See? Good ideas, y'all. You are fantastic. Could you use rivets instead of sewing? I thought about that too. We're going to use rivets for the other section, you know, this section here. You probably can. I don't think there's a problem with that. Um, I mean, you just see rivets, which, you know, rivets are definitely can be a decorative item. Okay, so let me 
make sure I'm going to do this right here. So we're going to put it about an inch above and we want to put it on the inside. Okay. Or the outside rather. Okay. So I'm going to do this. And then this side, we want to make sure we have facing up because the other side's facing down. And I see a center mark here for where I made my lining. So let me just line that up. And actually, the good thing about this is that you can line the bottom of your piece up with the seam. The seam from the upper lining. You see that? And then when we close it, we're still going to be okay. So I'm going to stitch here on the lining, um, you know, the upper lining, and then I'm going to stitch down below as well. Thank you for suggesting that, Laura. I think that was a great idea. All right, I'm going to stitch down below first. That holds it in place. Okay, so now we have that held. And on the inside, let's see if you can see that. See, there's just a layer of stitching right there. And since I, well, since the brown's kind of on the, um, sides you almost can't see it so now i can take my clips off because that's held in place and then we can just stitch here Okay, easy enough. Let's do the other side. So you see I'm going back and forth a few times. I want it to hold in place really well. I'm gonna take these clips off. Hi, I don't know who you are because on Facebook, I can't, whoops, I can't see your name. So whoever's saying hi from Facebook, hello. <laughs> Not sure why I can't see your name. Okay, so let's stitch above. All right, so that part's easy enough. It took longer to make the tabs than it did to sew them on. And then we have, pretty cool, okay. Yeah, um, Laura said, I wasn't sure if that would work since there was no Decoville light there. I think we're fine on that because um, I sewed, well, this one I didn't. I think you're fine, I think we're fine. There's enough stability. It's, this is not a, it's not a super light faux, I mean, it's not, really super heavy either. It's about mid weight, probably about a 0.9. I think I measured as 0.9 millimeter. All right, so now let's stick this in. And 
and we are going to clip around. Now the way that it was done on the Brahmin bag is they stitched the front and back pieces, like the strap and the um, flap on afterwards. So I'm gonna copy that. So I'm just gonna clip all the way around. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and sew this. I'm probably gonna start here in the back because this is where our strap and our flap are gonna be sewn. So we'll kind of hide it. Jen makes me want to go buy a cylinder arm. I will say that if you are in the market for a machine, I strongly suggest you look into a cylinder arm with a flatbed attachment. So this is a Texo 2750 Pro. It does have a flatbed attachment. Comes on and off pretty easy. You can see this screw right here. This is one of the screws that the flatbed sits on. You just get two in one. And if I had to do it all over again, that's what I would do. But back, you know, 15, whatever, 15, 16, 17 years ago, when I bought my other machine, I didn't even have a cylinder arm in my thoughts. I mean, it just wasn't even, I wasn't sewing bags. I was doing something else. So. So if you do have a cylinder arm, what kind of cylinder arm do you have? All right, so Jen, I have the Thor GC1541S. So that must be a flatbed. Thor is a good company too. I looked at Thor's when I was looking at buying this one. Yes, flatbed, yep. So all I'm doing is making sure that my front and my back are lined up properly. That's when you see me kind of shifting. That's what I'm doing is just making sure everything's in line. I do find that when you're using a cylinder arm, it really is helpful to have one arm behind and one arm in front. And I know I'm kind of blocking you. I'm sorry. That's why a lot of times I try to put the camera on the other side um, because it helps hold it steady. And for those of us who learned how to sew many, many years ago, that's kind of how we were taught, right? You're supposed to have one hand in front and one hand in back.
So someone says that's good to know. I'm not sure if you're I'm talking about the cylinder arm purchase or the hand in front and hand in back. <laughs> I'm assuming the cylinder arm. I will say that buying the cylinder arm machine has changed the way I sew. I mean, it just says the top stitching, it just is amazingly easy. I used to struggle with that. Pull this thread through to the back. <laughs> Auto correct, corrected Jen. I think from make to mail. We got you, Jen. All right, I am going to backstitch because this is going to be hidden. And then I'm going to, even though I backstitch, I'm still going to pull this thread through. And that way, when I burn it, it'll all be on one side, on the inside. Okay, oops, that's the back. There's your front. So, step one with this is done. Let's see how it does. And then we'll put our font and we'll do this. Very nice. Brenda says, I have the Thor GC1341, and it has been a learning experience for me. The built-in hump jumper is different. So the Texo, I think it's 4800, has a built-in hump jumper, and I did not know that. And so when I purchased this, this one does not have it. But when I purchase one for the classroom, I'm going to look at that because I think it would help. I think. I don't know, you say it's different. <laughs> Is it different good or different bad? Okay, you want to, I give you three holes for grommets on here. So we're just going to put this on top of this piece. And we're going to mark for our grommet holes or not our grommet holes, our rivet holes. We have no grommets. Okay, I'm gonna make some holes. Lost my dots here. Hold on. Let me get something that marks them a little bit darker. Can't see. And any glasses or different pen? Let me do this again. Good when you figure it out. Okay. Thank you for that, Brenda. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna punch holes in this. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is take my strap and using the same holes. I'm going to line this up at the top. It should be the same width. And I'm going to mark my strap for those three rivet holes as well. This silver marking pen is hard to see on this, and I don't know why. You would think on brown it would be easy, but... 
It might be um, old eyes. Janice says, the alley bee was my first drop-in lining. I love it. I do too. I like the drop-in linings, especially with the cylinder arm. Okay, I'm going to make sure my holes are lined up and they look really good. So now we need to mark the bag. So what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and put this on. And just kind of fold it over to the back. So the flap is going to go on the inside and the shoulder strap is going to go on the outside. Okay, and then we're gonna rivet or sew all these together as one. From what I have done with my measurements, it needs to come down, I think it was about an inch. Let me double check that. So one thing you don't want to do is get in the way of your pocket. So when you have this on, you don't want to, you don't want to have it so low that it interferes with your pocket. So just be careful for that. But in measuring this, it looks like it's about an inch. Make a few dots. So I'm just going to Make sure I'm even. And my ruler is right over here. Let me just stick this in and see. Okay, so you want to measure down one inch on the inside and the outside of this back. And you, of course you want it centered. And come down one inch and I'm just going to draw a line. And the bottom of the strap is where it's going to be lined up. Okay. So see that line? I think you can see that line. And I'm going to do the same thing on the back. And right now I'm not really concerned about the line being centered. I just want to make the line. And then when I put the strap on, I'll center the strap. I'm going to start in the back here. It's going to be easier for me to see. I can see where the center is because of the, I made sure to center the crocodile pattern. So I'm going to line up the center rivet hole on that crocodile line. Try to hold this in place as I mark. Make sure I'm even. Okay, and then let me go ahead and mark my holes. All right, got it. So let's see. Light. You can kind of see three holes there, three dots. So let's punch our holes. Now I'm going to be using large rivets, the largest I have, which is 12 millimeter. So let's go through the strap first. Then let's go through the bag.
Then we're going to put the flap on. Put our caps on here. I'm going to put these rivets away so I don't spill them and have to play pick up rivets. Let's get our rivet press. I did do my shoulder strap, or not my shoulder strap, my adjustable strap already. And I have my rectangle ring on here. I have the adjuster part, the actual um, swivel clasp. So all I'm going to do is stick this on the other side of the rectangle ring. Punch a hole. put a rivet, and then we're done. So I would say that it's quicker than having to do all the grommets. And then of course you don't have to do, you don't have to do the grommet, or of course the grommets, you don't have to do your actual cording and you don't have a cording piece. But other than that, everything else is the same. All right, so we're gonna hook this on. So there's the shoulder strap and I need to make it really long. Make it shorter. Let's snap this together and there we go. So as you kind of like when you have the other one with the grommets, the more you have it closed like this, it kind of trains the faux and or leather. So as you do this, these sides will kind of automatically come in and you probably will get to a point you don't really even need to snap the center. But there you go, LED with a different kind of closure. I like it. And inside, Nice, fits good. Now I showed you in one video how to put a foam on the bottom after you put your Decaville. And I've been doing that in a lot of my bags and I really like that. It kind of gives it a little cushion there at the bottom. I think it looks really nice. And it feels nice. So, yeah, I love this too. This is really easy, y'all. You can do this. And if you want this tighter, you can make this strap shorter. Might do that next time. Maybe make it a little bit shorter. I wouldn't put it any further down though, because if you put it further down, you're gonna start interfering with your pocket. So if anything, maybe take an inch off of it and make it a little shorter. Okay. So what kind of questions do you have? 
Friday Night Project, yes. Um, Jan asked, sorry if you already said this, but is it the full size? This one is the full size. You can do it on the 80%. You're probably just going to have to take the actual flap and reduce it down to about 80% size instead of the full 100%. And the strap or the flap is a little bit different shape than the original. And I did that because that's kind of what our inspiration was. Yes, I will put it on my shoulder. See, the, the, there's a little bit different shape there. So this is a new shape. All right, I'm going to move the camera so you can see me. And I'm going to stand up, so I'm going to kind of put the camera high. All right, I'm going to get the chair out of the way. Let's see if you can see that. So this is how I used to wear my LED all the time. It's just over my shoulder like this. This strap was a little long for me. I probably would shorten it a little bit more. And then, um, you know, you can always make it longer. This is one thing I always liked about this bag is you can make it longer and you can actually wear it almost as like a sling. So, and again, this, this strap's still a little long for me. The sling here, yeah, it is nice. And that would be really nice in the 80% size too. Okay, so that would be sling or shoulder. Pretty cool. And with a nice summer vinyl or faux, however you want to call it. It's probably more of a vinyl than a faux leather, I'd call it. Okay. So, again, this is new on the site. I'll post more um, as the weekend goes on, and I'll do a video so that y'all can see um, the colors a little bit better. Sometimes it's hard to photograph, and sometimes the lights here kind of throw the colors off. So I think just seeing both helps. Looking good. All right. Well, thank y'all for joining me tonight. We'll have a live. We can plan on doing lives every other Thursday, so I'll see you in a couple weeks. Always be posting things on the inspiration group. If I see something like this that I can do fairly quickly and we can do a hack, I'm certainly going to be doing it. I think it's a something great just to have something else out there. Wanda Chandler has um, posted quite a few alley bees on the site, on, not on the site, on the um, inspiration group. And it'd be interesting to see how her customers like this version because she says she can't stop making them. <laughs> they're, they're buying them like crazy. So, all right. Well, thank you, everybody. I hope you have a good evening. And until next time, happy sewing.